Yeah, we're holding uh, five lines from the bottom. Mem dollar on the base. Mem dollar on the base. Oh, you need the second one? Okay, we left off, we have Machlokis. Ulam Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says that if a person marries a katana, a minor, and the Gemara explained that it's speaking where originally the father agreed that this man can marry his daughter, but he married her without the knowledge of the father, when the actual marriage took place. So Rav Nachman says she requires a get. Shmuel says she requires a get and mion. And Rav Nachman explains it's being sheshitchu. It was a prearranged marriage. Ula disagrees. He says she needs nothing. She does not need a get. She does not need mion. She needs nothing. Okay? That's the argument. So the Gemara asks, Moshev Rav Kano quoted the Mishnah in Yivomis. Kula nemesu amionu. All the forbidden relationships... If any of them died before the husband dies, or they walked out, there was a rabbinic marriage, they walked out on the marriage. On this garage where they were divorced. Oshnipsu Islandis, or they were found to be abnormally developed. They abnormally developed to Rasei Mutoros. So the co wives are permitted. Right? We speak about, we mentioned this yesterday, Tsaras Erva. The co wife of a Erva assumes the same status as the erva. So therefore, if the erva was alive when the husband dies, as the person cannot perform yibum to the erva, so cannot, does not perform yibum to the, to the co-wives who are associated. Okay? So it does not perform. I think at least he went, no? I think he went to tell them. It doesn't make a difference. We can't function here. Who did you speak to? Who did you speak to? You spoke to an engineer, sir. Okay. Got to speak to the Glicks. No, no, no. Okay, let's try to learn. Okay, so if if the co if the erva past dies before the husband dies, so the women the co wives are no longer le linked to the erva, therefore the the whoever does the yibum is permitted to the co wives, right? That's the Mishnah. So we had a case. Let's say a man is married to his niece. He's married to his niece, and he has other wives besides his niece. Now he dies childless. So his brother is the oven. So if his daughter was married to his brother when he died, all the co-wives no, are free to remarry. But if she was divorced or she predeceased the husband or she did miun, miun means she walked out on the marriage, it was a rabbinic marriage, then the father of the daughter performs yibum on the co-wives. That's the Mishnah. Samar so has a problem. It says... The Kichaman, the daughter when she was married to, her, to the uncle, to the brother, who, who performed the Kedushin? Elam the Kicho of Yo, if it was under the, it was due to the father marrying her, Bemiun Sagi law, get Malia boy, is Miun sufficient? She needs a bona fide get? It's a Torah marriage. Ella Lab the Kichi in Navsho. She what? She married without the permission of the father. Uktani the boy Mion, and it says in the mission she needs Mion. I mean, according to Ula, there's no such thing as a Ketano who has Mion. According to Shmuel, right, Mion doesn't mean only Mion. It means he already gave a get. 
right? We said in our situation, in both, meaning it's speaking about shidchu. It was it was prearranged. He gave the get, but let's say she wasn't the mind before before he dies, so she's not permitted. He's not permitted rabbinically, correct? But let's say she walked out on the marriage. She additionally had miyun, but according to Ula, there's no such thing as miyun by Ektana. On that, more answers who most of law, who mafarik law. He posed the question, and he answered the question. Go chenaslo masi yisom chayav. We're speaking about the father's alive. The father's alive because the father's the oven. No, the, the father's the oven. If the father's alive, he's the oven. He's the oven. Well, but no, because rabbinically she's still married to him. Rabbinically she's still married to the brother. No, then it ends the Raisa. It's not an issue. So we speak with father initially agreed, but he wasn't there at the time of the marriage. So it's a Sufi. So according to Ula, there's no such thing as Mion in that case. There's no get, there's nothing. So what's the case of Mion? So my answer is very simply. I mean, the, you have to understand what the basis for the question was. You have Yisom Bechayav. If a f father fully marries off his daughter, fully marries her off, Kedushin is suing, that's up because she's divorced. So we discussed that since she fully left the domain of the father, now she has a right to marry independent of the father. As the mother and the brothers can marry her off, she has a right to marry herself off. That's the case. The father fully married her off. Subsequently, she married the, un the uncle, rabbinically. And now, before the uncle dies, she refused to remain with him. That's me. So Mar says, Yisoma b'chayav, Mosev Rav Amnuno, a mochra l'krovim. We had an argument. The halacha is that an omevriya, a Jewish maidservant, until she's a nara, the father has a right to sell her. To sell her into servitude. At the age of 12, when she reaches puberty, she goes out free. Let's say the master chooses to marry her. He's permitted to marry her. It's called yiud. What about if the master's not interested, but his son, he wants his son to marry her? Also he can. But he's not interested in either. So what does he do? Really, he should let her go. If not, he keeps her until she reaches the age of 12 or until Yovel. And then she goes out free. That's the Allah Amibriya. So the question is, could a father sell his daughter to his, un to his brother? The father of the girl could sell to the, to the uncle. The uncle permitted to marry his niece. What about to a brother? The father wants to sell his daughter to a sibling. To her sibling. To her sibling, yes or no? Because there, if he chooses to marry, he's not permitted to marry her. It's an incestuous relationship, right? So that's our discussion here. What? Wait one second. A mochra lekrovim. So according to the Tanakhama, he cannot sell her to a relative where the relative cannot marry her. The mast, because the mast, because the Torah says, he sh what the preference is that he should marry her. So if he marry, puts her in a position where, to a person who she cannot marry her, so actually selling her only for servitude. The option of marriage is not there. It's not available. That's Tanakama. A mochel krovim. Mishum Rebloza omru, mochel krovim. Rebloza disagrees, and he says he can. Meaning, you it is only what? It's an option. But it doesn't, that's not a, pre, uh, a prerequisite to selling a daughter into slavery. However, Vishovin, even the Tanakama who says that he could not sell it to a relative. But what about an almana? She's an almana. Let's say she was widowed from, the, from when she was a minor. So she returned to, the, to what? To the domain of the father. Now the father sells her again. Mm. Right? So let's say he wants to sell it to a coin godl. The coin godl is not permitted to marry an almana. So the question is, so it's a forbidden relationship but if he should marry, and Almona marries a, a, a widow, she's married, she's considered his wife. So since she has relevance to marriage, even the Tanakamu said that he cannot sell her to a, a master who cannot marry her, marry means where the Kedusha will not take effect. But if the Kedusha will take effect, although it's not a permitted Kedushin, even the Tanakamu concurs 
that it's a valid sale. The Shavit Shemokra al Modla Kohen Godol, Krushev Chalutza Kohen Hedjot. He could sell her, although it's a pridma relation like the Almona Kohen Godol or Grusha or Chalutza to an ordinary Kohen, it's a valid sale. Even the Tanakhama would agree that it's considered valid. Okay? Hai Almona Echidomi. What exactly is the case of Almona? Where he sells the widow, she was widowed previously, and we're speaking about a minor. A minor who was widowed, and the father is selling her into, into servitude. This is the Ome Brio. Hechidomi. Ilame the Kicho Avio. Are we speaking the father initially buried her off, and that subsequently she was widowed? That's, that's the case. So that means we're talking about a Kedusha and the Orisa. And she was widowed. Mi Motsi Masbin Law. After he married her off, is he, is this, does he still have the permission to sell her into slavery? Once he's, he married her off, he cannot, sell her, he cannot sell her into servitude afterwards. Okay? So if that's the case, what exactly is the case of, of Almona? Right? Elolav, what must we say? The Kodesh e Nafsho. She married herself off. We'll discuss in the money. The Kokori la Almona. Now. It's. He's going to come up and try to speak to them. Well, we're going to have to do something about it. Yeah, I understand. He can't function. Okay. So, okay. So, we speak. So he says, so what are we speaking about? It's not speaking with the father married her off. But rather, she married herself off. So, according to, wait one sec. So, according to Ula, it's not possible. <coughs> Right? You don't have a case of Almona. It's not considered valid marriage. She needs no meal. She doesn't need a get. So if that's the case, what exactly is the case of Almona? The Kokori La Almona. And yet she's called an Almona. Okay. Okay, let's explain what the question is. We're calling her Almona, right? And we're talking about she's a minor. She's a minor. So if she's a minor, the first marriage couldn't have been by the father. Because if it's by the father, then the father cannot sell her to servitude after he marries her off. Because ain't shivchos achorishos. So what are we speaking about? Evidently, she married herself off. So we're going to have a problem with this. So what is it speaking about? Maybe the father authorized the marriage. So if the father authorized the marriage, so again, it's the the father married off. That's what Tosis explains. So we're speaking with the father, the first marriage. It can be speaking with Shodich, and he authorized the marriage, because then if that's the case, it's the equivalent the father married her off. Correct? One second. Almon and is the same thing. That's Ein Shiv Chesach Rishus. That's Ishus. That's Ein Shiv Chesach Rishus. Otherwise, he's a, she's out of his domain in either case. He can't sell her. He can't sell her in either case. It's not because she left his domain. Right? If he full, marries her fully and then she's divorced, he can't sell her anymore. It's under she's an almona. That's exactly what we're talking about over here. Otherwise, we wouldn't need the halacha of Shiv So we want to know exactly why she's an almona. The difficulty is, according to Rav, why is it good according to Rav Nachman? That will, that's what we we'll see No, so she married herself off. So, so what? Wait, wait, wait. wait. You just have to increase the volume. It's not going to. He's not an engineer. Let him not play around with it. We have enough noise without it. 
Okay. So we're speaking about, according to Ula, it's understood it's difficult, right? Because her action means nothing. So if she married herself, it's not, let's talk about according, according to Shmuel, according to Rav Nachman. No, no, so we, we have a problem. So what, what are we speaking about over here? Why is it so good according to him? She married herself off. So why would she marry herself off? Why is she called an Amana? We, the way we explained it before. Why is she called an Amana? Because the father authorized it. So the father authorized it. We're back to, we, to the same question. It's Shivcha Sachar Yishus. We said according to Shmuel before. If it's Shadduch, if there was a prearranged marriage, her father originally agreed, and that's up she was married. She needs a get and she needs a meal, correct? So if she needs a get and she needs a meal, so if that's the case, it says she's married on the Torah level. There's a chance she's married on the Torah level. So why is it any better? So we could ask the question even according to Shmuel. What is the case of Almono? Evidently, the father initially agreed to the marriage. Subsequently, she was widowed. So the same question. How is she able, how could she be sold into servitude? Once he marries her off, she can't be sold into servitude any longer. Right? So if you say it's a rabbinic marriage, it's not a problem. But according to, according to uh, Ula, there's no such thing as a rabbinic marriage. He says she doesn't even need Niyot. Okay, so we'll, we'll see Tosis in a moment. Let's see Tosis, top Tosis. Allah the kitchi in Nafshi Kori Almono. Alma boy get. Omiun. So evidently, if we're calling her Almono, so you see that she needs a get. Omiun. Dila Fochi, the Kori Almono. Otherwise, we're not going to call her a widow. When the husband died, she wasn't the wife of the man. Because the Ulo, the Oma Filo Milo Trich, it's a difficult to Ulo, who says she doesn't need Niun if the minor marries herself off. So let's say, according, it's being about Shitcho, and according to one opinion, one, one version of the Gemara, even Ula agrees, where there was a Shidduch, so Yishlom, I came to Shidduch, Hainu Kumashi Kitsu Avia. If it's Shidduch, so that's the equivalent as the father married her off. Vim Ken Hoja Kush Leduchter, Um Nomotzi Mazbin Lo, Bo Enodem Oche Zbito, the Shivcha Sachar Yishus. Avala Liba de Shmuel Necha, but according to Shmuel, it's good. Why? The Mukilo below Shitcho was speaking where the father did not marry her off, did not initially agree to marry her off. Now, in that case, according to Shmuel, you, wait, 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 the Kokori lo Almono, Bishum de Boy Mion, El Ula Kasha. So Tosa is saying, you seek something interesting. If it's Lo Shitcho, he's saying according to, according to uh, Shmuel. According to, according to Shmuel, Lo Shitcho, definitely it's not a, a Torah marriage. It's not a Torah marriage. You don't need a get. The only time you need a get is Shitcho. According to Shmuel, because, because if you need a get, the question is, is difficult even according to Ula, according to Shmuel. Right? And the Gemara is only asking a question according to Ula. No, Mion, Mion, yes. Because if you don't need me, she's not called an almona. She's called an almona because it's a rabbinic marriage. So therefore, it's good, right? Okay, let's see. Let's get back to the Gemara. Omer of Amram, Elul, Omer of Amram, Hocha b'kedusha yud, Baliba the Rabbi Yosef Rebuda, was speaking. The father didn't marry off. He originally sold her into servitude, okay, and then the the master marries her, okay. So that's called kedusha. That's called yud. When the, mar fa when the master marries her, it's not cons considered the father married her. Because the difficulty was, according to, according to Ula, if the father married her off, he, uh, directly, he can't, sell her, he can't sell her into servitude afterwards. can't sell her as, as a maidservant. Because, hey, no, when she's widowed, because, hey, shivcho sacharishos, it's speaking, he never, father never married her off. He sold her once into slavery. Wait, wait, don't ask questions. He sold her into slavery. Yeah. Subsequently, she became, she became an almona. How did she become an almona? Because the first master married her. Wait a second, wait a second. Before you ask questions, listen to the facts. The first master married her and died. Now the father sells her again. Is she a widow? She's a widow. Now the question is, how could the father sell her again? She was married. But who married her the first time? The master married her. He didn't marry her. 
But the question maybe did marry her. How, how did he marry her? Has nothing to do with this. No, 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 no. Wait a second. Balibid Rabbi Yosef Yudah most we showed us love that we should need know. Okay, that's what we said. We had a review, right? We have a, we had a discussion in the first parak. What's the halacha? A man purchases a maid servant, okay? And now there's less than a shavat pruta at the end of six years left of the servitude, and he says, "Harei bukadeshesli." Harei bukadeshesli. So the Morris says it depends. If you're of the opinion, most we shown us like Kedushin Nitnu, that the original money that the father received is the equivalent of most Kedushin, even though there's less than a pruta left, she's married. But if you say most Achron is like Kedushin Nitnu, he's marrying her with her debt to him to serve him, so if there's less than a Shavu pruta, she's not married to him. So, so what's the difference? If the father received the money, and that money is the most Kedushin, it's the equivalent of the father marrying her off. But if it's the, the, what's left over, but the money the father received is not the most kedushin, it's not considered the father married her. So that's what it's more saying. That this b- Mishnah that it says that we say over here, we, she's an almono, that he's able to sell her into slavery and it's a yud, is going according to Rabbi Yosef Yudah that most Yishon is the kedushin. That the initial money was not given as most kedushin. When the father received the money, it's not as if he received most kedushin. The father never married her. The father never married her. Who married her? The master married her. And he had the right to marry her because the Torah says that as long as she's indebted to serve you as a slave, that value you can marry with that value, unrelated to the father. So, so now it's good. So he sold her once into slavery. He could sell her a second time into slavery. No, it's not. It's, it has nothing to do with shidcho. It's not, it's, it's not up to him any longer. He's no longer the master. He is no longer the master over the marriage. That's that's the halacha. Now let's let's let we discuss this. This is very important. If you remember, we discussed. We asked the question. I mentioned some name of Rabbi Tzolfonovitcher. You will not find anywhere, even if you hold most we show us the kedusha nitnu. So the simple understanding means the original money that the father receives when he sells his daughter that is the most kedusha. Andrew, this is a review. That is the most kedusha. So what does that mean? That if the master should des- decide to marry the daughter retroactively. The money that the father received wasn't to sell her as a maidservant, but that money retroactively is the equivalent of money given to him in marriage. Full. Full. Doesn't make a difference. Right? There's less than a shove of proof at the end. That means you don't need a shove of proof. No. Even it's less than a shove of proof. If you have most Rishon's Lugdushin, even it's less than a shove of proof. As long as she's called an Amivriya, he has the right to marry her. Why? Because the original money he gave the father is the most kedushin. As long as she's a maidservant. Once she's no longer a maidservant, he, he can't marry her any longer. He had a receiver, Shavu Pruta. He, no, it's Kesef. Anything less than Shavu Pruta is not Kesef. Why did you say that? Why did you say the whole money? The whole money was given for kedushin. Most yishanos kedushin, the full money was given. Because then the, that is that is that is the understanding. We'll, I'll explain to you in a moment why you have to say it. So we asked the question. This, this is Rabbi Zilpanovich's question. Rabbi Zilpanovich asked the question. You will not find anywhere. So what's the halacha if a husband gives a, a woman money for kedushin? There are no witnesses present at the time of the kedushin. It's not a valid kedushin, right? You need witnesses. You need aidin. You need eighty kedushin. So if we're saying most Rishon's Kedushin Nitnu, so when the father sells his daughter into slavery, you have witnesses have to be present when he, when he, rece- when he gives, receives the money from the master. Of course, if the master should choose later to marry her, retroactively, this money is most Kedushin. So when was the act of the Kedushin? The act of Kedushin, when he sold her. But you won't find anywhere that when a man sells his daughter into slavery that you have to have aid him at the time of the sale. So that's the question. That's the question. It d- does that be retroactive? Does that be retroactive? Maybe it is retroactive. Not retroactive. That 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 we'll discuss in the third paragraph. 
But what is the meaning of most Rishonim's to Kedushin Nitnu? The father, when he sold her, the Gemara says this is called Ein Shiv Chosach Rishus. If you have the opinion most Rishonim's to Kedushin Nitnu, it's as if the father married off his daughter, he can no longer sell her into slavery. The Gemara is saying now the only reason why he could sell her again is because most Achron's to Kedushin Nitnu. The money the father received initially is not most Kedushin. But if it would be most Kedushin, then, every, then definitely he could not sell her into slavery. That, that's right. And you won't, but there is such an opinion. And we rule most Rishonim's to Kedushin Nitnu. So what does that mean? What, what, it, it is, it, it, what is, is it a Maise Kedushin? Seemingly it's a Maise Kedushin. So what, what does that mean? What does it mean? So that's what he goes to explain. So the question is why? If the most was most Kedushin, you should need aid him. No, of course not. It's only if he says, I rape me you had sleep. Servitude, no. No, nothing to do with marriage. He's the master. So seemingly means if he decides to marry, retroactively, the money he gave is for Kedushin. It's like a man says, I'm giving the money either for mastership, and if I choose to marry, the money I'm giving you is for marriage. So it's like a conditional marriage. It was given conditionally. But it's retroactive. It's retroactive. Okay, seemingly it's retroactive. Okay? So th he explains it this way. So I'm just saying, you see the Chiddush over here. He explains it this way. Why could a father not marry his own daughter? Because Torah says it's, it's, it's an incestuous relationship. A father cannot marry a daughter. But let's say there wouldn't be an issue of incest. Would a father have to give the daughter anything, something of value, to marry her? A, a minor. He wouldn't have to give her anything. Because she is in his domain. She's already in his domain. A, a daughter is fully in the domain of the father. When a father receives the money in marriage... It's as if what? His rights he's giving to a third party. He's transferring his mastership rights to a third party. You understand? <coughs> so we say most Rishon's Kedushin, it doesn't mean to say is it the act of Kedushin. It's not the act of Kedushin. Whatever his position as a master, he's transferring to this third party. Now with the third party, he's in the position of the father. And he, no, no, and he has, doesn't have the prohibition of what? Of incest. So whenever he chooses to marry her, he commands, so at that time he has aid him. When is the act of marriage? The act of marriage was Harim Yedisli. It's not retroactive. The money originally that was given was given to transfer the rights. Now you're the master. You're the master without the provision of incest. That's the way he explained it. Therefore, when do you have to have aid him? When he says Harim Yedisli. That's the Rabbitzel part of the church. So, seemingly, if you learn that way, even if you're of the opinion most Rishon of the know, if the father sells him to servitude, he could sell her a second time. Of course, the original money he, he received was not matched. It was transfer of rights. Was it the, 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 the master is now the master. He, he, could exercise, he could exercise that right. It's one of the rights. The right he exercises marriage. That, the father couldn't exercise the right because he's a father. But now that he doesn't have the impediment of being a father, the master, he's able to marry her. That's the reason. But according to that understanding, seemingly, even if you're between most Rishon of the Nitnu, the father should be able to sell her again when she becomes widowed into slavery. Because the money originally received is not called Kedushin. Most Rishon of the mean doesn't mean it's an act of Kedushin. It's not an act of Kedushin. So, so what do we have to say? So you see a Chiddush, that even though it's not considered an act of Kedushin, but transferring the rights themselves, that the master should have the right to marry her, that's considered shivchos hachrishus. The reason why the master has the right to marry her, because I transferred my rights to you without an impediment. You're exercising that right. That itself is called shivchos hachrishus. It's the right to marry. When I sold you that, when I sold you my daughter into slavery as as your maidservant, you have the right to marry her. That's called Ishus, and therefore there's a ship But if the old the most Achroin is, what? And when, if it's exercised that right, then it's... It's not retroactive. It's not retroactive, but I'm saying, but he doesn't have to give any more money, because he 
Well, he's, no, that everybody agrees she doesn't have to give but, 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 but if you hold most Achronis, look, do she need no? The original giving over to slavery had nothing to do, giving you the mastership to marriage. That the Torah gives you the right. That as long as she's still indebted to you as a maidservant, and there's a Shavu Pruta of indebtedness, you could take that value and convert it into marriage. Why? Because the Torah gives you that right. That's unrelated to the father. The father did not give you that right. The Torah gives you that right. So if that's the case, this is Shivchus Sachar Shivchus. The father, the Torah says, you sell them once, you can sell her again. As long as she's still a uh, minor, you have a right to sell her multiple times. That's what you have to say in the Gemara. Okay? Itmar. Now, we had the case. No, so that's what I'm showing. That's exactly what I'm saying. But you see, over here, even though it's not retroactive, transferring rights where you have the option to marry, that's the equivalent of marrying off your daughter. That's called Shivchas Achrishos. That, that's what I'm pointing out according to this. But if you're Mos Achronis, it has nothing to do with the father. The Torah gives you that right to marry. It's not the father gave you that right. Right? It's not your mastership because the father had that right, and now you have that right. A master, the Torah says, has the right to marry off, to marry his maidservant as long as there's a Shavah Pruta of servitude left. Right? That's what it says clearly. So you see the way, the, the way the, you see the Gemara, where the Gemara understands it. No, instead we're trying to understand what does it mean Lavdu Kedushin Nid. Most Rishon's Kedushin Nid. We're showing over, even if you learn like Ravitzel Panovitcher, which clear doesn't mean to say that the original act, that's still called Shiv Chosach Rishos. If you're most Rishon's Kedushin Nid. That's still, although he, the money is not considered received it in marriage. It was purely a transfer of rights. That's, that's, it's a Chidush. No, then he couldn't sell her as a maidservant. If it's Shivchas, if ain't Shivchas Hacharishis, he can't sell her as a maidservant. Yeah. Right? But that's only if the old Moshe shows the Kedushin there. You see, totally. Okay. Okay, let's get stop in a second. Itmar. Wait, wait, sir. It's impossible. The Sutton is working full time. Okay. Itmar. We have the case where the girl marries without the knowledge of the father, who originally was authorized, right? There was a shidduch. So we say you need a get and you need miun. Let's say the husband who was married to her, in that situation, he didn't give the get, there was no meun, and he dies. And now he falls to a brother. Okay? He falls to, she falls to even to the brother. So what is this question now? What's the question? Wait, let's say she falls to the brother now. So this is, it's a suffix zika. She may be bound to the brother. She may not be bound to the brother, correct? That's the question. So let's say she dies, he dies, and now the brother gives a chalitza. Would that be sufficient? The answer is yes. He did nothing more than that. It would be enough. He gives a chalitza, and then she goes on her way. What happens if the brother, the surviving brother, instead of doing yibum or chalitza, he does mimer. He marries her, which is a rabbinical marriage. He gives her money, it's a rabbinical marriage. No, but again, it's a suffix. If the hu original husband would have been alive, he would have to give her a get and meun. You need both. The father, the father did commit the marriage, This is the case before. He originally agreed, but when the marriage took place, he did not authorize marriage at that moment. So it's a suffix marriage, but and you see, we're talking about get and meun. Now he dies, he didn't give the get, mm -hmm. she wasn't mine, and he dies. So she falls to evil. Right. Now the brother, the surviving brother, goes and does mine her. He says, Hare Mukadesh asleep. And now, he's not interested in doing Yibam. What does she need to remarry? She needs three things. 
option lead to get Miun and Chalitza. Right, but she said it's up, she needs Chalitza. But she'll need a get, and she'll need what? And she'll need Miun. No, because there's a question. Maybe the father was in agreement she should marry the second one. The Gemara is going to explain this. So, meaning just as the first one, there was a suffix, we have the same suffix with the second one. So, if the, he wouldn't have married her, so Chalitza definitely would be sufficient. Right? But if he did Mimer, so if the second one needs a get and Miun. Right, because maybe his marriage had value, maybe it didn't have mari- that value, but also you need chalitza because if the first husband's marriage was a marriage, so then he's bound on a Torah level, so she needs chalitza. We'll leave it to tomorrow. <laughs>